You are listening to the Caleb Turner Talk Show on the Anchor Radio Network. And now your host, Caleb Turner. Hello again and welcome everybody to our downtown Coquitlam, British Columbia, Canada studios here in downtown Coquitlam, B.C. It's a beautiful Saturday afternoon slash evening, depending on where you are listening on the, whether it's the Pacific Coast or the East Coast, or maybe you're out in the prairies there in Saskatchewan. I'm glad that you took the time to join in today to the broadcast. we got a great broadcast plan. I'm not going to give any hints to what we're going to be talking about. We'll just talk about it as it comes. i got about three or four segments that we're going to discuss in the time that we have here on the air. We're going to get our commercial break in. First, this is the Caleb Center Talk Show on the Anchor Radio Network. Do you suffer from gas? Don't you hate it when you can't hold it in and you are in closed quarters? Hi there. My name is Rob Pillsbury, and I am a gasologist. I hate it when I let it rip in closed quarters. I'm sure you do, too. But I have the solution. Stop eating Mexican food. That's the solution. This is the Caleb Turner Talk Show on the Anchor Radio Network. And now your host, Caleb Turner. We're back live on the Caleb Turner Talk Show on the Anchor Radio Network. It's been a rainy, cloudy, muggy day. seems like all of our broadcasts, it's always raining. Maybe that's a sign we need to change some things on the talk show. I hope you enjoyed that commercial. I'm sure a lot of you are laughing and probably still trying to contain yourself. Um, There is a problem in this world with gas, and I am not joking. There's more ways than one there is problems with gas, whether it may be the high prices of gas, like in a store, or your gas, period. Um, they need to invent, and I'm serious, they need to invent something that when you let it rip in public, somehow you can change the smell to a maybe flower fart or maybe a fruity fart. I don't know. One or the other, they need to come up with something, and I'm sure that they already have it made, and uh, they're just waiting for the right time to release it, you know, maybe when Mexican food is on the rise or something, I don't know. But, um... Yeah, I struggle with that, too. And I'm sure a lot of you listening struggle with that, too. Um, it's not a very, very cool thing, especially with your... Well, I mean, when you're hanging out, you know, with your friends, and it's, oh, it's kind of cool, man. Hey, man, you just farted, man. It smells. You know, okay, I can understand that. But, you know, there is some points in times when you can't, you know... You can't hold it in. It just kind of comes out, and you're with maybe somebody important. Maybe you're in a job interview, and you could just, you know, let it rip, and then you can press a button, and poof, here comes this flower smell, and you're like, oh, yeah, you know? But um, I don't know. I'm sure that they'll make it soon or later. Last night, or I should say this morning, uh, the bronze medal game and the gold medal game in the World Juniors World Junior Under-20 Championships over there in, um, was it Uso, Uso, Russia? Uso, Russia? Something like that. Uso, Russia. I don't know. Who cares? Canada and Russia played. I don't really care where it's at. Um, I just care the results of the Canadian team, and the results were not pretty. I stayed up and watched this game. Uh, One o'clock, face-off, our time, uh, over here in the Pacific Standard Time. And I stayed up and just watched it, and um, I was hoping I could actually uh, watch a good game. And it was a good game. Don't get me wrong. It was a very, very good game. Canada did not win, and they did not get a medal for the first time in 14 years. And, um, you know, it, it, it was one of those games where you're watching it, and right off the bat, Russia scores two goals, and they're up 2 nothing, and you're thinking, oh boy, here we go again. Another, you know, poor performance by the Canadian team. And, uh, you know, they, they fought their way back. They were close the whole entire way, um, but just didn't have enough. And in overtime, Russia ended Canada's medal streak. Now, the stories coming out of this game is the fact that the goalie uh, was pulled. Uh, he allowed three goals on five shots. That is unacceptable or unacceptable, 
as my employer says. And, um, you know, I, 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 in the last game against USA, in which Canada lost, was it 5-1 or was it 6-1, Bob? I think it was 5-1. Malcolm Subban got pulled. He is the starting goaltender for the Canadian team. This game against Russia, they go back to the backup and they play Bennington. That's not a smart coaching maneuver. It is not. Number one, you've opened up the opportunity for Malcolm Subban to just kind of zone out, knowing he's not going to get a chance to play. And number two, you're putting a lot of pressure on the backup goalie to go out on center stage and win a bronze medal for everybody back home who's been watching the whole entire tournament and especially watching the bronze medal game. And he failed. Like, miserably failed. But when Malcolm Subban came in, he actually looked really fantastic. Malcolm Subban, the starting goaltender, uh, he came in when they pulled Bennington, and um, yeah, Subban made a, several miraculous saves. And um, But the team just in general couldn't capitalize on the opportunities that they had down the stretch, and even in overtime, several open nets, and they couldn't get their stick on the puck, unfortunately. Canada loses and does not win a medal for the first time in 14 years. That's a little sad, considering that the U.S. win the gold. Now, I'm an American. Um, I always will be an American. I'm an American first in basketball. I'm a Canadian first in hockey. That's just the way it goes. Um, and that's about that's about the extent of it. Now, I am an, a, I'm an American second in soccer. I cheer for the Canadian team. Love the Canadians, um, especially the Canadians women team. They're in the Olympics getting the bronze medal. That was awesome, and I love to watch that. But the uh, the game against the Americans, that was kind of a botched game, and it's too bad the refs blew it for the Canadians because the Canadians should have been in the gold medal game and probably would have won gold. I think that the way Canada was playing, but anyways, we're, we're getting on a rabbit trail here. Let's get back to what we were talking about. Team Canada, Team USA, the rivalry. And I know they just got done playing Russia, but there's a rivalry with Team Canada and Team Russia. Come on, they're border countries. Team USA wins the gold against Sweden 3-1. And I think that as a Canadian, you've got to look at this and you've got to think, okay, where is our hockey program going? You know, there's the Winter Olympics in 2014 coming up, just next February, over there in Suchi. Suchi, Russia. So Russia's going to have home ice. All right, whatever. They have home ice. Who cares? We can still smoke them. And I I think that it's it's going to be something that, that, that Team Canada and Team Canada in general are going to have to, you know, think about where they're going with the program. And they're going to have to, you know, obviously pick out the best players that are here in Canada. I'm sure Sidney Crosby's going to be in there, John Tavares, uh, Jason Spezza, Jonathan Taves. And, you know, Ryan Nugent Hopkins may even have a shot at it, um, even though he is a rookie. But I think he has a very, very good shot at it. Played great in the tournament. And, um, but we'll see. We'll see what happens with that. Team Canada loses, and they do not get a medal for the first time in 14 years. And um, that's pretty sad, especially when I stay up. Watch the game. First time that I've ever stayed up to watch a early morning, well, early morning, late night game um, overseas. And that happens. It backfires. And that's just, that's really sad. But anyways, that's all I got to say. That's just, yeah, it, it was too bad. But um, Team Russia, then after they scored the overtime goal, they went and taunted the Team Canada bench. And I thought the celebration was a little over the over the top and, uh, you know, I, I think every goal in a World Junior Hockey game, every goal, they celebrate it like it's the gold medal goal. Every goal. It was crazy. Every goal that both teams had last night, it was these full celebrations, jump into the glass, salute the crowd, and, you know, huddle over in the corner and jump into the glass. And anyways, I think they over-exaggerate uh, a little bit on their celebrations, especially when you start uh, taunting the other team because of your win. 
The Caleb Turner Talk Show on the Anchor Radio Network resumes after the break. You are listening to the Caleb Turner Talk Show on the Anchor Radio Network. On February 3rd, 2013, come out to Anchor Baptist Church and help the WFD Ensemble celebrates three years of the What Faith Does traditional song. That is the three-year anniversary of What Faith Does at Anchor Baptist Church. This is the Caleb Turner Talk Show on the Anchor Radio Network. And now your host, Caleb Turner. We're back live on the Anchor Radio Network and the Caleb Turner Talk Show. I like this music, Bob. It's very uh, Spanish sounding. Uh, I can see the, the snapping. I like it. It's nice. The next topic for today's. I think we're going to start calling them podcasts now. The. Uh, okay, I don't know. What sounds better, the Caleb Turner Talk Show or the Caleb Turner Podcast? I don't know. I Talk shows happen all five days of the week. Podcasts happen once in a while. Podcast, podcast is something that, that, you know, you record yourself and, you know, you're on the radio station and you put little bleeps of it here and there. A talk show is something that takes place and it's like usually a two or three hour segment. It's a two or three hour show. I don't know. We'll, we'll see. We'll see. We'll, we'll talk about it, Bob. Next topic. Differences between guys and girls. This is a requested topic from a Jill in Missouri. And uh, Jill, thanks for sending this one in. Difference between guys and girls. Now, I didn't really have to go far uh, in my research and, um, you know, my own personal knowledge in this area. Um, the difference between guys and girls. Number one, communication. I think we might as well start out with the number one reason, or I should say difference, between guys and girls. For girls, something gets communicated the wrong way, and maybe, oh, somebody miscommunicates something, or somebody misinterprets something that someone said, and girls ignore each other forever. They don't say a thing until the person who has misinterpreted, or I should say missaid, because the girl is the misinterpreted, the other girl is the one that said something that was misinterpreted. So she's the missaid. The missaid girl is supposed to come to the girl that has misinterpreted what is going on. She's supposed to apologize first. Then they can go back to being themselves. So it's this long process, and it can take weeks for a friendship. This is according to Google. Google search. It can take weeks. This process, it can take weeks and sometimes months for the rare case. For girls to get back together and becoming friends and talking to each other, texting, calling each other, you know, talking about each other's boyfriend. Or I don't know what girls talk about. What do girls talk about? That should be another topic that we talk about. What do girls talk about and what do guys talk about? We now want to go there. Number two. Well, no, I guess I should say for guys. Yeah, that, that's, that's true. That's true. I'm just ripping on girls. I guess we should talk about the guys too. For guys. According to Google search, they ignore for a little while. And a little while can range from anywhere between a couple of minutes to a week. That's it. For girls, it can range from a week to three months. That's crazy. And, and for most guys, it's not a week. It's usually within the next two days. And it's not something where there's this meeting where, like, oh, you offended me and everything, and and you need to apologize to me. No, it's something where you just, you know, you just move on, basically. Yeah, I don't think I've ever sat down with somebody that I know, a guy that, you know, maybe something was missed out. I don't think I've ever sat down with someone and, like, you know, got in their face. You offended me. I don't think I've ever gotten anybody's face before. I don't think I don't think it's ever been anything that. You know, a harsh statement was like, boom, there it was. No, 
That's not guys. Guys don't do that. Girls do, though. Girls will get in your face and let you know when you are miss, you know, uh, messing with the wrong thing or saying the wrong thing. They'll let you know. And the subjects, the subjects that maybe you girls and guys talk about, that's when things start getting misunderstood and misinterpreted. Right there. Number two. This is a kind of a youth group thing. Bathroom breaks. Now, I think I think this is one of the most uh, underrated things in a youth group. Bathroom breaks. Now, I don't know how uh, your youth group is, wherever it's at, but usually, and this is with our youth group, usually, if one teen girl has to go to the bathroom, all six of them have to go to the bathroom. They may not even have to go. It's just a place to hang out. Now, what kind of logic is that? Hang out in the bathroom. We're gonna go hang out in the bathroom. You wanna come hang out with us? That's like that's like saying, I wanna go and I wanna hang out in the dump. I wanna go. Hey, you wanna come with me? We're gonna go to the dump. We're gonna go. We're gonna go sit around. We're just gonna talk. Where's the logic there, folks? Here, come with me. We're going to go to the bathroom. What are we going to do in the bathroom? I don't have to go. Why do I want to go with you? For guys, it's like, get away from me. I'm going to the bathroom, man. Dude, seriously. For girls, it's like, come with me. There is no creepo in the bathroom. Usually, there isn't a creepo in the bathroom. Hopefully, there's not. But the logic between and behind that statement I don't understand it. I've always thought that I've always thought that that was always interesting. You know, I when I joined the youth group, junior high, you know, it's like, you know, you're just this runt. But even as a runt, you see this, you know, this girl says, "Oh, hey, you know, I gotta go to the bathroom," and you know. Says to the group of girls, and you're kind of sitting around. You know, I'm just kind of sitting back here with my friend. Right? We're just talking you know, about hockey or something. And all of a sudden, you know, one of the girls says, I got to go to the bathroom. And they're like, okay, we'll come. We'll come with you. And I'm sitting there, and I'm thinking, huh? Why do you want to go with them? Why do you want to go with her? It's confusing. It's something that I think as a guy, we never understand it. Maybe because we don't do it. Readjusting my headphones there. I don't know. I think that I, th I think that that's a big difference between guys and girls. Number three. In the front seat of the car, not driving. We can almost do a driving one, but in the passenger seat, shotgun. For girls, you know, when 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 a person slams on the brakes, they're just freaking out. They're like, ah! You know, but just stop so fast. You know, and screaming at you. It's like the end of the world. Oh, you stopped. And we could talk about Asian drivers all day. I'm not talking about Asian drivers right now, but we could talk about them all day long. I gotta do some research. Asian drivers getting in accidents. That's what I should do. I should do some I should do some research on that. And then I should do white people getting in accidents. For guys, it's, you know, calm, cool, collective, oh, man, you stop, man, that's so cool. <laughs> and I don't know what kind of guys do that. This is just Google search. Communication bathroom breaks and in the front seat of the car. There's so many differences between guys and girls, though. I mean, we, we, we could talk forever. You know, but then there's the eyeball girl who does things that guys do, like belch and talk about sports. You know, what do girls talk about? Fashion? Do they do they talk about fashion or I've always been told that girls talk about different things than the guys talk about. What's there different to talk about? I mean, come on. We're all humans. You know, we're all from the same dirt. <laughs> you know? 
I don't know. It's obviously a God-given thing that guys talk to guys differently than girls talk to girls. Obviously, that was a God-given talent ability at birth. The Kale Tenor Talk Show resumes on the Anchor Radio Network when we come back. Anchor Films, hit film, EBI 2, available for purchase, $9.99, in participating stores and Walmarts, as well as Best Buy and Future Shop. This is the Caleb Turner Talk Show on the Anchor Radio Network, and now your host, Caleb Turner. I'd like to personally uh, congratulate... Uh, Miss Alexis Faith Nelson on her graduation. Our family attended her grad party last night, the 4th of January, and it was a nice, short, sweet party. That's what I like. I like short ceremonies. But, um, yeah, we, we, we enjoyed it. I enjoyed uh, seeing the whole Nelson family. It's been a, it's been a little while. Um, the whole Nelson family. I haven't seen the whole Nelson family in... Probably, well, I haven't seen Austin since two years ago, year ago, year and a half ago. But uh, congratulations on graduating and moving on into the next chapter of your life, which is freshman year of college at Golden State Baptist College in Santa Clara, California. So congratulations to Miss Alexis. Next topic of interest, moving right along. I thought I might throw out some what I like to call fun facts and or things that people didn't know. Um, This year, uh, 2013, marks the 100th anniversary of Port Coquitlam and Port Moody. I do not live in those two places, but they are the bordering cities to where I live. And um, a traditional thing that they do uh, in Port Moody at a certain, I think it's called Rocky Point Lookout or something like that. There's a place where you can, like, go into the water and everything. On New Year's Eve uh, and into New Year's Day, I believe it was New Year's Day, um, they have a tradition, I don't know how many years it's been going on, but basically, people go swimming. Um, January 1st, it's just a ring in the new year, let's all go swimming. And about 7,000 people turned out this year uh, to keep the street going and uh, there were some people streaking. <laughs> so, um, but anyways, I was not there. It's a good thing I was not there. It probably would not have been very good. But I just, can you imagine swimming in probably 30 degree Fahrenheit waters? Well, 40. 40 degree Fahrenheit water. And people were getting in the water and swimming around. <laughs> Having a good time. Yeah, right. Anyways, I just thought I'd throw that out there. Richard Nixon, if he were alive today. And um, he is not alive, obviously. He would be a hundred years old uh, this year. And uh, same for Gerald Ford, President Gerald Ford and President Richard Nixon. Um, This is the 100th anniversary of Woodrow Wilson becoming the President of the United States. Obviously, he was the president during World War I. And uh, kind of people kind of blamed him for the Depression and how that first Basically, 21 was his last year of being president, and basically there was an eight-year procedure to when the stock bottom fell out in that next eight years. Well, it was kind of like the president after Wilson kind of inherited all these difficulties, and that would be Harding, and then, of course, you had Coolidge, and as well as Herbert Hoover, and then I think Roosevelt was next. I want to say Roosevelt was next. Ohio celebrates 210 years. This year, they were the 17th state. Um, admitted into the Union, and um, I just thought that was kind of cool because, uh, you know, uh, my dad was born in Ohio, so I figured that I'd throw that out there. Columbus is the capital of Ohio. 1803 was the admission into the Union, and of course, um, that would have been about 60 years before the Civil War, almost 60 years before the Civil War broke out, and they sided with the North. We need to clarify that. We'll clarify that in the break. I want to 
I'm about 99.9% sure that they sided with the North. West Virginia, the 35th state admitted into the Union, celebrates 150 years as a state this year. And I think that that's kind of cool. I have family that lives uh, in West Virginia and people that I know that are part of West Virginia, the states there that live in the state. Charleston, West Virginia, the capital. 1863 was when it was admitted, and that is basically goes right along with the Civil War. Basically what happened was there was a part of Virginia, um, a pretty good section of Virginia. Virginia was huge in, uh, back in the 60s, 1860s, and back in the 1800s, mid-1800s, and basically they chopped off a piece of land and made that, and obviously it was to the west of Virginia, so they called it West Virginia. And um, another Charleston, it obviously has something to do with Charlestown, um, uh, King Charles. I'm going to say this something to do with King Charles. And of course, it's a town, so you can name it Charles Town. And they just name it Charles Ten is the new English. There is no W, uh, T O W N. It's T O N, as in ton, U A 1 ton. And speaking of which, Miss Ebony McNeil, who recommended the Chicken McNugget Talk, uh, talk segment in our last broadcast, recommended that I should do a segment on the lady that wished to weigh one ton and. After many, many years, I guess, or maybe many, many months, she achieved her goal and actually weighed one ton. We are not doing that in this segment. We are not doing it in this talk show. Uh, we may be able to do it next week. I had absolutely no research and not very much time to prepare for that topic. Um, but we'll think about it. I'll think about it. I don't really want to get wrapped up in a segment of how a lady uh, weighed one ton. Um... We might lose some viewers with that, maybe. Um, yeah, that wouldn't be very good. Some fun facts for you before we wrap up this next part of the Caleb Pinner Talk Show. Just a couple of, and just you know, a couple of random facts that I don't think people really know. Uh, here's one: uh, worms, as in the thingy that, as in the it that uh, worms around in the dirt, worm. A worm reportedly tastes like bacon. Let's let that sink in a little bit here. A worm reportedly tastes like bacon. I don't know who found that out, but that's a little interesting. Right-handed people, on average, live nine years longer than left-handed people. Praise the Lord. Now I'll live nine-handed nine years longer than a left-handed person. That's nice. Um, let's see here. McDonald's is the world's largest distributor of toys, and um, that makes sense, you know, because you got the Happy Meals and everything, but anyways. Baskin Robbins once made a ketchup ice cream that I would never want to try. The can opener was invented 48 years after the can, and it would take approximately about 1.2 million mosquitoes to fully drain the average uh, human body of Blood and historically, sweat has been an active ingredient in perfume. That is quite interesting. Oh, here, here's here's the last one that that I thought was quite interesting. And in 1977, a 17 year old boy had a tooth growing out of his left foot. Yeah. I do not recommend um, looking at facts on the internet. Um, a lot of the facts probably are incorrect, um, but I just threw those out there because I thought it'd be entertaining for our viewers to listen to. Moving right along into our next part of this segment. You know, I, I, I think that sometimes when radio talk show hosts get to a certain point in their broadcast where they kind of, you know what, they kind of run out of things to say. I think a lot of talk show hosts run out of things to say, like I am right now. Running out of things to say, we're going to take a break, and um, we when, when we come back, I do not know what we're going to be talking about. I have absolutely no clue. We'll just ramble. Um, I still got like 20 more minutes before I actually hit. Uh, the end of the air, so we got 20 minutes of air time where we can just kind of sit around and chat. Uh, we may take a couple of phone calls. We'll see. We'll see what is in store for the Caleb Turner Talk Show when we come back on the Anchor Radio Network. Haven't found the one that has changed your life for real? 
Are you looking for someone to be that difference in your life and changes it forever? Anchor Mingle can help you. Just look us up on the internet. We have everything. All ages. As long as you are 18 and older, you can be a part of something that truly does make a difference. AnchorMingle.com Find the one that God has for you. We're back live on the Caleb Turner Talk Show on the Anchor Radio Network. Moving into our next segment today. Talking a little more basketball. I know the last couple of weeks we've been really hammering this basketball theme. But I love basketball. I always have. I've always been a big basketball fan. And especially right now, looking at the many teams that are doing pretty good in the NBA. Looking at, of course, the Lakers, you know, they aren't doing that good, but they got a pretty good team. They just can't seem to get it all going together right now. The Knicks, the Heat, and the Thunder. Of course, the Heat are always good. The Heat are going to be good for the next four years. Of course, LeBron's always going to be there. Of course, the Thunder with Kevin Durant, Russell Westbrook, and Serge Ibaka. But joining me on the line from the New York Times, a veteran following basketball for the past 20 years, looking at all of the amazing Knicks players. Donald Trump the third. How are you doing? I'm good, Caleb. How are you? I'm doing pretty good. Thanks for joining us on the show. I know that uh, there's been some pretty big games in the last couple of weeks. I know last night, I, I know you're not necessarily a Lakers follower, but I know you had to have tuned in to the Lakers and the Clippers just from your take as a basketball fan forget the next but as a basketball fan the ratings of that game had to have been skyrocketing what were your thoughts oh i just i just can't believe where the lakers are right now you know i was thinking kind of the same thing um it's just all kobe yeah there's no team right now yeah yeah clippers they have to have the best team yeah for sure. Blake Griffin and Chris Paul, of course, leading the way for the Clippers. But it's not just Chris Paul, Blake Griffin. And they got DeAndre Jordan and Karan Butler and Lamar Odom, Shannon Barnes and Fareed. So many, many guns there. But your team, the Knicks, having a, a pretty good start in, with Al Murray Stoudemire. But reportedly, they don't need him on their team. Just following, watching Carmelo play. Carmelo seems to be in his prime right now. What your, your thoughts on the Knicks and where they're at going forward within the next couple of games? Well, they're actually a big shock to me because I don't know where they were last year. I think they barely made the playoffs. Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah, I mean, Carmelo's just amazing. I mean, I haven't seen him any better than what he is right now. Um. Uh, who do they play next? You know? Um, read my calendar here. I think they're on the road. I think, I want to say that, I want to say that they're on a road trip. But yeah, like what you were saying, um, they were the eighth seed in the playoffs last year and played the Miami Heat and got swept. With Jeremy Lin. Yeah, with Jeremy Lin, and Lin was, had the ACL injury. Yeah. And, uh, now he's in Houston and doing, he's doing okay, but. Yeah, with James Harden there. Yeah. Which, which which leads me to say, you know, the Thunder losing Harden, but still having one of the best records in the NBA. Just obviously coaching has got to be a big, uh, big thing. There was Scotty Brooks and to have Kevin Durant, Russell Westbrook, Serge Ibaka, Kendrick Perkins, just to name four of their guns. That's got to be pretty cool to have those kind of players on your team. They're all young. They can run forever all that endurance the Miami Heat New York Knicks and especially the Clippers the three oldest teams in the NBA but how have the Clippers how have the Knicks and how have the Heat been able to do it obviously they have quite a bit of stars in LeBron Wade Bosch and then you got in the Knicks Melo J.R. Smith 
um, Chandler, Tyson Chandler, and with the Heat, you got, you know, everybody that the Heat have. But the Clippers, Blake Griffin, Chris Paul, DeAndre Jordan, just for the Knicks, getting these players that they got in the offseason going into this season and starting out the way that they started out and really still right up there in the top, just seeing them play, it's it's pretty amazing seeing such an old team be able to keep it all together. Yeah. How old is your point guard? Isn't he like Felden? a five-year-old rookie? Yeah, Felden. Is it, is it Felden? There's Felden, and then there's the, the Italian guy. The Italian guy, oh, man. Uh, he played last game when... I think Felton wasn't playing. Okay. I think I know who you're talking about. Five-year rookie, right? It's a 35-year-old rookie. 35-year-old rookie. That's right. That's right. 35-year-old yeah. rookie. I think it. Uh, it's not Gallinari. No, it's... um. Oh, I wouldn't be able to remember. Yeah. We got yeah it's an Italian name. It's Of course, it's odd. <laughs> um, The Lakers. Dwight Howard... Picking up Dwight Howard and Steve Nash. Of course, Steve Nash being here from BC. Um, and that's why we here in BC have been really following him quite a bit. Um, the Lakers obviously have their troubles. And it looks like right now it's age. Um, but it, the, the, the one of the oldest players in the team is Kobe. And he's scoring the most points. Of course, Kobe's Kobe. Yeah. But still... One of the oldest players in the team is Kobe Bryant, and he's putting up over 30 points a game. Just how is how are the Lakers actually at 500? I know they're at they're 11, the less. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's just that's unbelievable. I couldn't imagine that. What place were they last year? You know. Uh, they won the Pacific Division. They had to be top. No, no, you know what? No, no, no. They did not win the Pacific Division. They were fourth. They were fourth. And they beat the fifth seed. And then they played... They lost against the Thunder. Yeah. It was... Yeah, it was the Thunder versus the Lakers, and it was like... Was it Dallas versus somebody? Um... Because then Dallas played the Thunder in the Western Conference Finals. Or was it San, San Antonio? Yeah, it was San... Oh, yeah, that's right. It was San Antonio. San Antonio. It was San Antonio. San Antonio beat Dallas. And San Antonio played Oklahoma City, and Oklahoma City won and went to play Miami. That's right. 20 years of experience following the NBA. Ladies and gentlemen, Donald Trump III of the New York Times. Donald, thanks for joining us. All right. You have a good night, and uh, I know you're staying up there on the East Coast, 11 o'clock. A lot of a lot of controversy, I know. I, I, obviously, you, you probably don't follow much of the NFL, but the big Tim Tebow controversy there in East Rutherford for the Jets. You gotta feel the backlash of that, eh? Yeah. Donald, thanks for joining us. Have a good night. Hey, you too. All right, thank you. Bye. All right. Donald Trump the third of the New York Times joining us from New York. He sounded tired. It's eleven o'clock, folks, on the East Coast. Obviously, he's tired. You would be too. And I'm tired of being on here. We'll take a break. We'll be right back. The final segment of the Caleb Tinder Talk Show, January 5th edition. You got it on the Anchor Radio Network. The all-new Anchor Phone 6 is in stores now. You can buy it for $50 plus tax. This phone brings you all the latest state-of-the-art technology in phone services. That's $50 plus tax. But wait! If you call in the next 15 seconds, we can double the offer. Two Anchor phones for the price of $50. We're back live on the Caleb Turner Talk Show on the Anchor Radio Network wrapping up the day. It's been a good week. For me, it's been a good week. I hope everybody had a good holiday uh, time off, uh, New Year's Eve, New Year's Day, the works. It has been fun. It's been a fun week. I got a lot of things to look forward to in the upcoming week. A lot of things planned, a lot of places to go, a lot of people to see, a lot of things to do, a lot of things to buy. It's prime time, baby. It's January 5th, 2013. We are in 2013. 
AD, which makes it even better. We got things as people to look forward to. We've got things that we can look forward to in the near future, and it's amazing. Another year has gone by, and it feels like just yesterday I became a teenager. It's unbelievable how much time has flown. Bye. That wraps it up today. A shorter edition of the Caleb Tenor Talk Show on the Anchor Radio Network. Tune in next week, January 12th, 2013, for another edition, another round of the Caleb Tenor Talk Show. I apologize for the shortened show. We will definitely have a full length show next week with a lot of things to talk about and a lot of things to do. There's a possibility, though. That there might be an earlier broadcast for next week. Potentially as early as Monday. I'm going to be joined by a special talk show analyst. He's more than just sports. He is everything. I'm not going to give out any names yet. Because we're not sure if we're going to have him on the show or not. We might. We may not. But tune in. For the next broadcast of the Caleb Tinder Talk Show on the Anchor Radio Network, I'd like to thank everybody working behind the scenes. Bob, back at control. Sitting next to me, Bob, of course. Thank you so much for doing all that you do to keep this show on the air. I'd like to thank the Anchor Radio Network. Bill, our producer and supervisor. Tim, back at control, running all of the other things that had to be run that Bob doesn't run. But Bob runs quite a bit right here in studio. That does it for us. The Caleb Tinder Talk Show on the Anchor Radio Network. Oh, special thanks to Donald Trump III of the New York Times for joining us as well. Hope you enjoyed the show, folks. So, the I hope you enjoyed the show, folks. Let's just say this nice and slowly. It's been a good day, and I hope that you have a good weekend, and have a good week. We'll see you next time on the Cable Tinder Talk Show. You've got it live on the Anchor Radio Network. This has been a presentation of the Caleb Turner Talk Show on the Anchor Radio Network. Tune in every Saturday night for the Caleb Turner Talk Show on the Anchor Radio Network.